super tweeters and a mid-range and a big Kef bass driver. But uh, what I'm saying is, three-way ultimately is gonna be better than two because you will have a mid-range driver doing the, you know, catering for those vocals and it's not gonna get interfered with by the bass activity that's, that, that uh, it needs to do. So there is nothing better, I would say, than a well-engineered three-way thing. Um, let me just say a couple of other things, because crossovers are really important, yeah? Because the more drivers you have, the better that, you know, the more time and effort really has to go into this crossover. Now, these things here, they're not super expensive. I think I, people try to get a, a lot of money for these now, like three or four hundred quid. Uh, a few years ago, it wasn't like that. I got these for like 120 quid. They didn't have the grills, by the way, but um, they are, they do not have a sophisticated crossover, yeah? They have four drivers, so you're getting some elements that is good because you've got a dedicated mid-range driver. You're getting more cones moving more air. You're going to get a big sound. It won't be a super sophisticated sound with great positioning and accuracy, mostly because I haven't spent the time on the crossover and probably even the cabinet. You know, they just haven't really gone to town. And obviously the more money they, the more time they spend, the more money it's going to be. Uh, I mean, these aren't bad drivers in here. These are probably C's, yeah? Or FIFA, C's? Certainly C's. Uh, so the Bang & Olufsen didn't use bad drivers, but it's just not super sophisticated, yeah? It's not monitor stuff, but it's a big sound. We've got a lot of drivers. Also worth noting, if you're buying old speakers that look a bit like this, if they're old, four drivers, there's more things to break. Yeah, there's more things to go wrong. Quite often, I mean, this, which I have a pair of, obviously, one of these drivers is not working properly. Yeah, that happens a lot with second-hand speakers and obviously the sort of cheaper ones. You know, I think it's that driver there. It works, but it's not working properly. Something's gone wrong with the coil. Uh, you know, I won't get the details, but it's working, but it's not working as it should be. So when you look at old speakers with multiple drivers, if you look at a speaker like this that sold a pair, I would almost bet one of them isn't working properly. You know, quite likely two drivers aren't working properly. So. Watch out for that. If you're buying, I mean, if you're going to buy these speakers and you want to test them, you're either going to get them out on a workbench, or the only other thing you do is literally go around each of these tweeters and play it and try to listen. But still, if you don't pay a lot of money, you'll get a big sound out of these things because they have a lot of drivers in them. Um, okay, I just wanted to talk about quickly one thing. I'll quickly talk about this, you know, the whole shape issue. And, uh, well, I talk about, if you notice, some speakers have a thing, they call themselves matched pairs, or they're basically mirror image, yeah? The most ordinary speakers, like these, say for instance, they'll be like this. They're both the same, yeah? They're both exactly the same. You do get speakers, monitor audio, do it on some, on the MA5, I can't remember, there's, there's plenty of them about, where they are like this, yeah? So they're a mirror image, each one is not an identical, yeah? And if you have things like that, the way for it to go is the tweeters are inside, are in the middle, like this configuration, yeah? Not like that, that's, that's not how you do it. I mean, it's counterintuitive, but it's the way speakers disper uh, tweeters disperse sound. If you have matched pairs, that's how you want it, yeah? And that's not just me, that's the official thing with you. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, the other interesting thing is, you know, configurations are interesting. And I've messed around with moving tweeters from place to place, you know what I mean? And I mean, it's not a big deal. And it's just a sort of a hunch almost that I have, but I personally like it when it's offset like this. The straight up and down thing, I don't know, just a, just a small point about uh, configurations. And also an interesting point about speakers that, that are in just one cone, yeah? Like Kef UniQ, it's one driver and the tweeter is in the middle, yeah? You won't even barely see, know the tweeter is there, but the tweeter is literally in the centre of the cone. And that is also what Tannoy do, if you know. I mean, the Tannoy sound good, very big sound. You see, if you've listened to Tannoy, the, 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 the mid-ranges will get big in those things. Uh, so what am I saying? I don't really, I'm not a fan of it myself. I'm, I'm really not a fan of the Kef UniQ with the tweeter in the middle. There's something that happens, particularly I'm referring to that UniQ, where it, they, you know, they say, oh, it works perfectly because the sound hits you at the same point in time. And, you know, there's all this technical talk about it. It just doesn't sound good. It seems to be less spacious to me. It just seems to make less space when that happens. But, um, you know, I'm just in the world there of, you know, it's almost pseudoscience. So, you know, I, I don't want to put, I don't want to sort of swear on the Holy Bible about that. But if you ask me, I kind of prefer, I don't like the one driver. And when I have experimented, I like it when the driver is not above, but at the side. It seems to just make a tiny bit more space. I mean, there'll be people that can, you know, do an hour lecture about these things. But that's just my, you know, vibe, my impression from my experience. Um, okay. I think that's about it. Uh, so that's Rogers LS35A, Rogers LS3 something, I can't remember. Bang & Olufsen S75 and Spender BC1s. I like all of these speakers and I don't like those ones that much. Uh, just so you know. So I, I hope I've covered everything and um, if you look on my channel you'll see all things about getting dents out of tweeters, and also how to make this black stuff look nice again. Black stuff looks shiny. Uh, okay, thanks very much. See you again.